So my journey to entrepreneurship was unexpected. As the physicians in the room know, um, in medical training, there's a lot of travel involved. And so when medical students graduate, they enter into a national matching system that sends them to residency programs across the country. When I graduated from my residency, I did family practice and I do maternity care as well, I um, moved back home, which is a, not an uncommon scenario, and left that professional network I had built behind. Uh, and the next question that faced me was, well, how do I look for a job when I don't have a network in, an, in a new area? And I uh, identified that really the, there was basically two options. One was fragmented uh, job posting boards or expensive recruitment agencies. Uh, and so I set out to uh, solve this problem and low community is the solution. So if you've never met a locum uh, before, I'm a locum physician or a substitute doctor. And I chose the locum or temporary physician lifestyle because of um, flexibility, higher pay, minimal administration. I'm not alone. The US has close to 100,000 locum physicians. Uh, we saw that number um, over the last eight years double as that gig economy or freelancer lifestyle infiltrates into the medical industry and the young millennial physicians wanting flexibility and autonomy in their work life. Uh, meanwhile, the demand for locum services has skyrocketed. So 94% of medical facilities report using a locum in the last year. Uh, most of these, uh, I would say the most common users are community hospitals and urban underserved in rural areas that do not have enough permanent staff and so have a constant need to supplement their workforce with temporary um, physicians. And by the way, these 100,000 locum physicians represent a $4 billion industry in the U.S. and are part of a bigger temporary healthcare staffing market that's rapidly growing from $16 billion to $28 billion just in the next three years. And these $4 billion do not include physician wages. These are commission fees paid to place physician A at hospital B for three to six months and then move them to hospital C for another three to six months. And this industry is rapidly growing because of multiple key driving factors. One is the aging population, uh, the millions of people who entered into the healthcare system uh, with Obamacare, uh, and increasing physician shortages, which are mainly due to retirement. I believe, and there's supporting literature, that there's also an underlying issue with physician distribution and utilization. So really redefining that locum term and utilizing perhaps full-time physicians who live nearby to uh, communities who are underserved. Uh, and if they had known about the opportunity, wouldn't mind dedicating one weekend a month or so to that community. The current market is dominated by expensive recruitment agencies in the US that charge 30 to 60% commission, sometimes up to 100% commission, on the hourly wage of that temporary physician. Their processes are archaic, they're labor intensive, very manual, and on the physician side, um, there's that lack of transparency. The job postings are very vague. You have to phone to find out the details about a job or to find out whether it's even relevant to you. And obviously the high costs on the, on the medical facility. The pressure to create a better physician recruitment strategy is in the news and a priority for the National Association of Physician Recruiters. So low community creates a centralized marketplace that directly connects job-seeking physicians, we're starting with the temporary physicians or locum physicians, with the medical facilities that seek them using a data and community-driven platform. A quick glance through our minimal viable product right now, this is a, a physician profile, which is only accessible by the employer if the physician has shown interest in the job. Um, when we looked at how do we present the job search, we looked at what's already best in class um, rather than reinventing the wheel. So there are two ways that physicians search for jobs. This is our curated job list, which uses a matching algorithm to present um, a curated list, curated list of jobs one at a time to the physician, and they can pass or save, so swipe left or swipe, swipe right uh, on the job. And um, if they pass, we ask why, is there something that would change your mind? Um, and we're collecting that data throughout the job search process and actually feed that back live to the employer anonymously so they have a live read on the, how their job is doing. Um, we've seen physicians spend two to three hours <laughs> filtering through one job at a time, so people will do this. 
Uh, and the other was how I envisioned low community initially, that Airbnb search map where you can, uh, the vision is ultimately that you zoom out and you can see jobs anywhere in the world. How does working in Australia look like? Or how does working um, in Canada or the US look like? So really for us, um, in terms of the, the business model, we charge a transparent and, and fixed uh, commission fee in the US of 30% uh, across all specialties. And the goal is to transcend beyond a recruitment platform and to really utilize data and our matching algorithms to create um, a system where there's a short fill time, uh, finding the right fit uh, for that job. So not just based on qualifications, but also culture fit. Um, uh, and creating a community of physicians uh, on, on the platform. So we started out in Canada in beta in 2017, uh, and we have 1,900 physicians registered on low community, and we have about 300 uh, small to medium-sized clinics, which is our market segment in Canada, registered as well. We were part of Techstar Seattle early 2018 and moved to Washington State for five months during which we did um, a test pilot. The main goal of it was to understand the parallels and differences between the Canadian and US system and to see whether this was a pain point um, uh, and can we acquire both sides of the marketplace. Uh, for which the answer was yes, we were actually able to create uh, great partnerships with some of the most trusted and respected names in healthcare uh, in Washington State. Uh, this just, um, again, validating some of the feedback that we heard um, from, that we're hearing from both U.S. and Canadian physicians, uh, or sorry, U.S. Um, medical facilities and a Canadian physician. And for me, really, the, once I started digging into this issue, I realized that it was a global problem. The U.K. has the same issue. South Africa reached out to us with a similar issue. The U.S. has a similar issue. Canada has a similar issue. So really, this is not a country-specific problem, it, it is actually a global problem. This is the team currently. There's been some changes over the last year, um, but the team currently consists of myself as, as CEO. Um, Yoreta is our technical lead, uh, remote developer, and Katiana is my remote credentialing specialist. Uh, and then I, as consultants, I have um, met uh, during my expansion to California, so I started should explain expanding to California in January of 2019 uh, and exploring this market and during which time I met Lupita who's a, who owns her own recruitment agency and has been very helpful in kind of understanding the, the workings of the recruitment world here. Chris Mandarino is a business advisor um, uh, that's been with us since the Techstars program. Uh, we have um, two people in our advisory board, Dr. Mike Halpern, a, a retired respected emergency physician who's very well co connected in Washington State, and Nate Mock, who's VP of product teams at Zillow, which is a, another two-sided marketplace because it's a very unique problem to solve. Uh, I've been very lucky in that a lot of the mentors that I met through Techstars have also turned into investors. Um, so John Pauli, who still mentors me once every two weeks, um, as well as the Urban Spoon founders, for those of you who remember Urban Spoon. So what I'm looking for, so really what brought me here is I've been ex exploring the California market since January. And for me, there's high appeal on the physician side. It's, it's very easy for me to recruit physicians. When I, whenever I explain the concept, um, so currently we have about 400 US phys physicians <coughs> registered on the platform. Um, last August, we went to the American Family Physician Conference for medical students and residents. And I would say 95% of, of people who um, ended up on our booth registered after I explained the concept and how we're different from a recruitment agency. Uh, and what I'm really looking for is the job side of the marketplace. That's really been my biggest impediment so far is getting those job listings and not being lumped into the same recruitment um, bucket that recruitment agencies get lumped in, which whenever I mention the term locum tenens, it seems to be almost a uh, uh, kind of has, a, again, a negative connotation to it that I'm picking up in the U.S. Um, and so really, I just need the job listings to start um, experimenting with the matching algorithm. Ideally, it would be within one site where I could really understand what they're looking for, start adding some of those culture fit questions into our um, platform and matching algorithm and work from there. 
Um, and then also looking for um, potential co-founders in the US. So um, a healthcare recruiter who is what's called a full desk recruiter who understands all sides of recruitment um, and how things are work and maybe has an existing network, that would be ideal, as well as a US physician who um, is well connected um, and would be able to build out that job side of the marketplace or, or kind of facilitate a pilot program. So that's it, that's me, Hanin from Low Community. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay, so the question being, how do we make it, how's, what's the business model like in Canada or how do we make it work in Canada given that it's a single payer system? So, we, so yes, that's why our market segment in Canada is the small to medium sized clinics. So in Canada we still have a lot of these small independent practices that are composed of four to six physicians um, and there, there's lots of them. Um, our ideal market segment in Canada is just emerging and those are the clinic chains that are tech enabled, um, because in Canada right now our commission is only 5%, given that it's a single payer system, public health care system, people don't realize as a family doctor I'm paid $30 per patient, no matter how much time I spend with them. So it's a very, there's not like clinics who are independent are just making it by, like month by month with overhead. Um, and so for us, those um, clinic chains that are very tech um, savvy and, and have uh, created efficiency are our ideal market segment and they're just coming into play in Canada uh, and so we're catching the market a bit early as well in Canada but we don't deal with the hospitals at all in Canada it's small to medium sized clinics yeah um, yes <laughs> so how are you dealing with the credentials yeah, so obviously that was a, a, a steep learning curve in the U.S. In Canada, it's like I ask for government ID, I check on a public database, and I'm done. <laughs> uh, here, it's obviously uh, a lot more involved, and that is why we added a credentialing specialist. Um, she does hospital credentialing on, on her full-time job and is um, basically mapped out her full credentialing. So initially, it will be manual. I've also been networking with startups who um, basically, so right now I had to basically join 12 databases to pull information from the NPDP and DEA and da da da, da and all of those things. Um, and that startup has automated all of that and it pulls it automatically into an Excel file. So also keeping my eye out for like startups that could be kind of um, uh, help helping us, yes, that could collaborate with us and help us kind of um, Ease, ease that as a bottleneck because it is a huge issue. Yeah. yeah. Question: Do you have a facility on here to say have a video interview if somebody wants to check, or is it just all on information sharing? So, so, so sorry. Do you mean like a? Oh, I see. Um, so, cur so currently, how uh, do we facilitate the interaction between the locum and the facility? It's through a chat, which we have built ourselves. So, internal chat on the on the site. Um, a lot of people do then arrange um, for uh, outside, like then they share information or a calendar to kind of take the conversation off of the platform. Ultimately, obviously, the idea is to create that closed loop, and so we would introduce video chat and all of that within that. But right now, they can chat back and forth internally on the platform, and then usually what happens is they connect outside, yeah. So is your U.S. business model um, based on how locums um, earn their, you know, their commission, so you'll kind of go in and make a competition for that, or are you doing something completely different to disrupt the... Uh, <coughs> the locums here in the United States. Yeah, so initially it'll seem, so how are we disrupting kind of the recruitment market in the U.S.? So initially we seem the same, like basically I'm, uh, the locum would work for a local community as a 1099 contractor. I'm placing them in different jobs that they're connecting with. The idea is they're connecting directly with that in-house physician recruiter that, rather than talking to me and then me relaying that information and kind of creating that. So we're circumventing that 
third middle person right away. Um, eventually, as as we kind of expand, um, obviously the the idea right now is that we uh, offer lower commission rates for the facility, but also higher pay for the physician because we're automating a lot of the steps. Um, so there is that, and then the transparency. Everything is there on the job posting. Your pay, your support. Are you supervising mid levels? All of those questions that are very important for people to know before they reach out. So we're saving people time as well. Uh, sorry, one more question, someone in the back that's been... So we do handle the payments. So the payment does go through low community. So we basically agree on a certain hourly rate with the medical facility and then pay the physician through low community. Um, and so we've outlined all of that. So I've, I've kind of spent the last six months combing through all of those like compliance requirements and all of that and I have that all set up we have we've been approved for malpractice insurance to cover great malpractice insurance actually to cover like the standard um, quality uh, malpractice insurance to cover those locums um, the travel piece and all of that right now would be done manually but again my vision is that um, you know you click on a job you chat you um, to, to clarify some details and then you know once it's accepted you're on to another uh, page that shows you three Airbnb choices or one hotel choice. You click on that, three flight options, um, and then off you go. I mean, that's that's the ultimate vision. Yeah. Uh, I, guess. Well, I guess the only other question I have is, so, you know, it's an incredibly fragmented market on the on the hospital side. Let's focus on just hospitals. Right. How do you see your approach? Because, you know, there are quite a few competitors out there. Contenders.com mm -hmm. and a bunch of others. So how do you see, what's your approach to kind of getting into those individuals at those institutions who oversee hiring? Um, and so what's your approach? Because it's a very fragmented market. It's very expensive for us Yes, I, I think, so the question being, um, how are we going to infiltrate on the hospital side to all of the f fragmented um, key players that kind of make up this market? Um, and that is why initially I do need someone with those connections who can slowly build that out. As soon as people hear that we have cost savings, um, that the physician's getting paid higher, that we're giving them not just a physician, but actually someone with, we've considered the right fit, I think then that kind of... Um, reputation will, will allow for more connections. I just need that starting site that's gonna do that and that has been my obstacle so far. Um, with physicians, like I posted on a group called Physician Sidekicks, a Facebook group, within 72 hours I had 300 physicians sign up. So that's the appeal is there from the physician side and I just need it from the, the right person from the hospital side. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.